YouTube has continued to attack alternative media by demonetizing most of our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit our Amazon store or our Patreon page. Links below. As you can see on the screen right here, we will be talking about The Expendables. Now, this is a franchise, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually pretty, pretty happy with. I've, I've always enjoyed The Expendables. Um, I love the concept. I went and saw it opening weekend when it came out in 2010. I mean, this is a franchise that opened up against Scott Pilgrim versus the world, which should have been like the quintessential comic book movie of 2010 outside of Iron Man 2 and, and ultimately failed because Universal screened the movie so many times for free that people just didn't care. And I felt bad because it, it's a, it's a good movie, but even though it's been almost eight years or seven and a half years, uh, ultimately forgettable. Whereas the Expendables, you can sit there and think of the the sequel, which of course this is a wallpaper for, um, and the third movie, which which had its own problems. But I think a lot of it had to do, and I will honestly say, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the movie was pirated, was leaked out through its DVD. A DVD screener came out three, two or three weeks before the release of the third movie, uh, therefore prompting a, a lot of uh, in, you know, negative response to it because it wasn't as good and it um, people just didn't go and see it when it came out. But then again, this is 2014 and Guardians of the Galaxy had just opened up a few weeks earlier and that was still doing really well. So I think that it just came out at the wrong time. Expendables, while well, predominantly in August release uh, film, it probably should have come out maybe September when it was a little bit deader or like early October or maybe being pushed back to January. And as we've seen with movies like Split, uh, you can come out in January or get out even this this from this last year uh, can come out and do quite well. So the reason why I'm talking about Expendables today is because this popped up on Sylvester Stallone's Instagram page a couple days ago. And it just says, just when you thought it was safe to go outside, they're coming back having a picture of a uh, Jason Statham and uh, uh, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> Spencer Stallone, and then it's the dude, the boxer guy, I can't remember his name right now, uh, saying, we are the shadows and the smoke, we rise, we are the ghosts that hide in the night. Now, not only did this photo pop up a couple days, four days ago, uh, getting fans stoked for the idea of a potential return to the Expendables franchise, but you've also got, he posted this picture too, that says Barney will be back plus the crew and a couple of new members. Now that's one of the greatest assets of the Expendables franchise is the constant rotation of characters. Go back to the first movie where you've got uh, Jet Li over here pops up in the movie for a, you know, for the, for the whole thing. He's in it pretty much for the whole movie. Then in the second movie, he's only in it for the very beginning and then he ends up you know pretty much effing off on his whole other side adventure uh therefore you know kind of you know we're moving him from the cast and bringing in somebody else and then you've got you know uh chuck norris showing up for that little bit that was awesome in that movie uh whereas chuck norris and bruce willis did not reappear for expendables 3 so i mean there's always this rotating cast of films uh, are these cast of characters that come in and I'm definitely on board. Like, I love the fact that Gunner, uh, Dolph Lundgren's character was a bad guy in the first movie, but ends up coming back into the fold for the second. Cause I've always enjoyed Dolph, Lung uh, Dolph Lundgren's character in the movie and everything else. But if you take a look here, you can see that to date, the Expendables franchise has earned more than $800 million worldwide with three movies to its name. However, the PG 13 Expendables three was a big step in the wrong direction, bringing in a series low 214.6 million. So so it's very likely that Expendables 4 will return to its R-rated roots. It's unclear at the present time who is writing the script and more importantly, who is going to direct. But if this latest post from Stallone's Instagram is to be believed, the movie is happening and then you can check it out for yourself. So the, the thing is, you have a franchise of three movies that has grossed $800 million worldwide. Now, look, in terms of, let's say, comic book movies right now, you see that there are quite a few that have grossed that on their own. So these are lower budgeted movies and they are, they're ultimately lower budgeted movies. Go back and watch the first Expendables, all the blood is CG, right? But it was what it was is it was a Stallone pulling from Rambo, which I, I, I gotta say 2009's Rambo was, was pretty choice in my opinion, pretty, pretty top notch. Um, and him coming off of that and then doing this, I think is fantastic though. So I, I don't know about you, but I am a hundred percent on board for going back into the world, uh, teaming up with Barney Ross and the expendables, because I feel for one, they have good camaraderie with each other. The movies are, they're dumb, campy, you know, rehashes of the eighties action scene, which to someone like me who grew up in the eighties, who watched these movies, uh, is, is very happy that they're continuing going forward. And I want to see 
everyone come back. I'm hoping Bruce Willis pulls his head out of his ass and makes an appearance. I'm hoping Jackie Chan shows up. Now, I do believe Jackie Chan could be could be in it simply because he just did that movie, The Foreigner, with Pierce Brosnan that came out a few months ago, and that just hit DVD. Um, and that would that's the one that's kind of out of the typical norm for Jackie Chan. So he might be, you know, willing to explore some more uh, different styles of films. And I'm pretty sure if they brought in Jackie Chan, they could definitely play up his his old, you know, more like over the top comedic action flair. Uh, and I think that'd be really good too. So I, I definitely excited to see what they do with this. I hope we get more information soon.